here's just a quick video to talk about a variant on Taylor's remainder theorem. Uh, it's not often one that I see stated uh, in first year mathematics, at least uh, at my university, but it's actually a little bit more useful in practice. So just to remind you of the setup. Uh, first, we've got some function f, which has uh, a Taylor series. So it has sufficiently many derivatives. And I'm going to have the Taylor series uh, based at some number c in the domain of f, um, like so. And it's got some interval of convergence, and I'm assuming I'm inside that interval of convergence, this makes sense. Okay, <clears throat> and so we can get the Taylor polynomial, so let's say the nth order Taylor polynomial for f is the sum up to n, capital N. So the same thing, but now it's a finite sum And then the remainder theorem says that, so the, I, I define the error, nth error term to be um, the function minus the nth Taylor polynomial. And then Taylor's theorem gives a bound on this. Well, in fact, it actually gives a formula for this, but this is in terms of an unknown number. So in the course I'm teaching at the moment, that number was denoted by psi. So what is this? This is going to be uh, the error term. So actually, the theorem says there is a number psi between x and c so that the error term is exactly uh, what you would expect if you took the next term in the Taylor series, but you replace C by Psi. So N plus one's everywhere. And so I've done it again, it should be a capital N. Right, so what is this? So there's two cases, like C here and X is here. It means Psi is in here, or C X is on this side, and Psi is in here. So depending where X is, so um, <clears throat> yeah, so there is some, there is some Psi in there that works. Um, all right, this is fine, but what we want to do usually is not actually get equal, what exactly what this error is, we want to estimate this error. So this is a, a one, Another thing we can do, but actually what we care about, so what we usually want is an upper bound. On the absolute value of the error. So we don't care if it's positive or negative. We just want to say, well, is the error at most like 10 to the minus six or something like this? <coughs> And so there's a slightly weaker version of Taylor's theorem, which allows us to sort of think about upper bounds. And also like working with this, working this, with this formula is kind of conceptually hard because it's like, what, what, are, what are variables? What are constants here? There's a lot of letters. Um, so I mean, C is fixed because we've got a Taylor series centered at C. And it's in this formula, it turns out that X is also fixed uh, 
n is fixed, but then xi is a variable, then xi doesn't even appear on this side. Uh, so so what, what, what on earth, right? So the uh, this this version here is a slightly, this is kind of like a weak Taylor's theorem. Weak in that it doesn't give you a, like an equal sign, right? It doesn't give you, right? It doesn't give you an equal sign, but it gives you an upper bound, which is actually what you want. So I don't think this has actually got a name. I'm just going to call it weak Taylor's theorem. Uh, and so <clears throat> this is a this is the statement. Suppose uh, that I'm going to take the absolute value of the n plus one derivative, evaluate it at some variable psi, and this is going to be less than uh, let's say m. This is some number on the interval x c to x or x to c as appropriate. This is if c is less than x. This is if x is less than c. Then the absolute value of the error term is going to be less than m over n plus one factorial x minus c and power n plus one. All right, and this is really what we care about. We want to say uh, all right, we really want this this estimate here. Right, and now, right, if we if we look at what's happening here, we don't care about this specific um, this specific number psi here. All that we care about is this function between x and c. We just have some upper bound for it. So, so for example. Let's say uh, if the maximum of of this is um, m, probably make less than or equal to here, is m. Then we can we can take that number m. Then take that upper bound. So, for instance, um, <clears throat> like, let me just think about a random function and suppose that the derivative <clears throat> so the n plus first derivative is that so I, I have a function I don't care what it is let's suppose the n plus one derivative is equal to um, you know one over psi to the I don't know some number cubed whatever And let's say <clears throat> that c is equal to one and x is equal to 1.5. Right. So what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about this here is, is um, um, Let me zoom in. Right. So, xi 
this is y, this is y equals one over psi cubed. And so what I'm thinking about is what is the maximum of my function on this little interval here? Right. And if I think about it, well, this is a decreasing function on the interval here. It's going to achieve its maximum when psi is the smallest, that is when it's one. And so this is the maximum value here, which happens to be one. And so I can take uh, m equals one as well. It's positive here, so the absolute value doesn't really matter, which equals one over psi cubed is less than or equal to one. And then I can feed that back into my, my estimate. And, and the good bit is, once you have this upper bound, this is just a number. All right, so back in this formula here, m is a constant. All right, so psi is somehow, well, it's kind of variable. It's somewhere between x and c. I don't know what it is. But here, m is a constant. It's just some number that's an upper bound. And, um, and in practice, at least in first year mathematics, what you're doing is just finding the maximum of a function. Um, and what is this? And it's not just the maximum of blah. This is the maximum of this, this function here between x and c. All right, so that's just uh, another perspective uh, to Taylor's theorem, which I find quite useful in practice.